everyone. Here's my new C Melody saxophone. This is a Martin handcraft stencil called the Great Gresh American or the Great American Gresh. I'm not sure, but I named her Gretchen. Um, this is as I bought her. I have not restored it or done any adjusting to it yet, but I'm going to get it all cleaned up. And I have a C Melody mouthpiece on it with a tenor saxophone reed. And this is a Legere 2.25 reed. It's got some pretty significant air leaks and it's super dirty. But here's how it plays as it is. It's a little uncomfortable to hold. I take some getting used to like how to position it. But here we go. <laughs> So I'm all ready to start disassembling my C Melody saxophone. Um, I wanted to show you my workspace and show you how, how I have it all set up. And then I will just jump right into it and um, probably show a little bit to begin with and then go to a time lapse. So here we go. Okay, so I want to show you my workspace. So I have my saxophone here. I found this squishy pad at the dollar store. It just so happens to be a perfect size for my C Melody. And then I also found this drawer liner to help protect the desk surface. I have a computer for my tutorial. Um, I have this tray where I'm going to put the rods and screws to degrease them in here with this spray degreaser. And then I have my toolbox, which is my old caboodle that I've repurposed, which turns out to be the perfect size for saxophone tools. So I've got everything in there. Um, so the main things I'm going to need are some pliers, a spring hook, and a screwdriver. I have another screwdriver set here for some smaller ones. And I actually found this at the dollar store as well. And then I have these little pin covers, which I'll show you later on how I'm going to use those. Um, I got these blocks from Music Medic to organize the screws and the rods so they don't get mixed up. And then, you know, just have a drawer with some Q-tips and some pipe cleaners, which I'll be using later. But to start out, these are the main things I'm going to need, as well as these. Um, I guess I can explain these now. Um, one of the biggest complaints I guess people have with taking apart a saxophone is that the springs are really sharp. And it's easy to stab yourself on them. And so what I'm going to do is put these, um, they were lapel pins. And I just took the little ends off. I'm going to use those to cover the ends of the springs so I don't get stabbed. So that's what those are for. So you'll probably see me putting those on and I'll show you what that looks like. Um, but I think that's it. So I'm going to get started. Here we go. Okay, so I'm ready to start disassembling my saxophone. Um, I'll show you the first couple of keys 
and then like I said I'll speed it up so it goes faster. Um, so I'll start with these low keys, the um, C and the E flat keys. I've actually taken those off before so I know what I'm doing. <laughs> so here we go. So first thing you want to do is disable the springs. And then take out the screw for the rod. So like that. And then this comes right off. Okay, so here I'm getting ready to um, clean and polish my C Melody. So you can see what it looks like before, all the dirt and tarnish on it. And I have all the um, pin covers on all the springs so I don't get stabbed. So you can see what that looks like with all the keys off. And how it looks before. And I'm going to be using uh, Haggerty's uh, Silver Foam. It looks like this. And it cleans and polishes at the same time. And you could just rinse it off. You don't have to buff it off. And so I've got a little toothbrush, some sponges that I cut up, and a bottle brush with two sides that I got at the dollar store and some rubber gloves. So, and then I bought this um, liner for the sink so it doesn't get scratched up. All right, so I think now I'll go ahead and do a time lapse so you can see. Here we go.
Okay, here's an update on just the um, top part that I started polishing. You can see it's um, pretty hard to get underneath the springs, but where I did get, it's looking nice. Um, so this is gonna be quite a process to get done, but there we go. That's how it's looking so far. I'll let you know when I'm done. One eternity later. Okay, so I have now finished cleaning and polishing the saxophone and you can see how gorgeous it turned out. Uh, it took me a few hours to polish it and it actually took two rounds um, to get everything. But I'm very happy with how it turned out. And now I'm going to do a time lapse of putting it all back together again. I did it. I disassembled, cleaned, polished, and reassembled my C melody. Look at it now.
this video. I just wanted to go over a few things to wrap this up. Um, so I had a lot of fun with this project. I learned a lot. I've become a lot more familiar with the workings of the saxophone and it kind of demystified a few things. I mean, it looks so complicated, but once you get into it, it's kind of a fun puzzle to put it back together and it wasn't as difficult as I thought it was going to be. Um, and I felt empowered by the process. So it was really fun. And now I want to um, do the same thing to my other silver saxophones and get them polished up. Um, some tips for you if you want to do this yourself. Um, number one would be to know the key names, you know, which note goes to each key. And that just makes it easier to keep track of when you're putting it back together. And then also, and even if it's your own sort of naming system, just as long as you know what it means. And especially like when using the music medic blocks, which I do recommend. Um, for example, here, they have one spot for the low E, low E flat slash C key. But on the C melody, there's actually two different rods. So I had to kind of modify it and make a separate spot down here for the low C. But just as long as you know the system and which keys are which, um, some of them I labeled once I had taken them off, I labeled with a sticky note just so I make sure I knew what it was. Um, whatever system you come up with, that'll make it easier. And then the other thing to do take a lot of pictures um, that'll help you see which key goes where. Um, there was one picture I didn't take, which was at the very bottom back here, I think it was. So yeah, just take a ton of pictures up close of each section and that'll make it easier to put it all back together. Um, let's see what else. Oh, my lapel pin covers. So I bought them, I have one here off of Amazon. I bought a whole pack of them. I think it was 60 that came in a pack off of Amazon. And I'll put a link to it if you want to try this out. But it worked. So I put these little covers on the end of the springs and I did not get stabbed a single time. Um, I almost did. One of them fell off and caught my glove, but I made it through. <laughs> So I'm uh, really proud that I thought of that and um, I call it Stacy safety mode. So if you use it yourself, make sure that's what it's called now. Um, one tip with that to help the little covers stay on, I put a dot of clear nail polish in the top and that helps it kind of grip on to the spring better, this little end piece. 
Um, I did lose a few when I was washing the saxophone. Um, and actually the very first one fell off and went into the garbage disposal. So I had to get that out. But um, for the most part, they stayed on and helped protect me. So that was a win. Um, let's see what else. I'm still getting used to playing it. It has, you know, a unique sound, a unique voice. And, you know, with any vintage instrument, it just takes a little bit to get used to the key work. Um, still working on the playability, figuring out intonation, things like that. Um, also the, um, the little ring where the neck strap attaches sits up really high on C melodies. So I may have it lowered to make it more comfortable to hold it and play it. Um, but I think that's it for this video. I'm going to split this into two parts because it's getting to be a long video. Um, in the second part, I'll go over more of the mechanical side of things. Um, what it looks like with the leak light before and after I had the work done on it. Um, the repairs I had done and things I'm still working on. Um, working on intonation, seeing if I can get help with the key setup and things like the corks, see if that'll help with intonation, neck strap placement, as I said, um, the mouthpiece, cleaning swab, the case. I can go over all that in a second video. But um, I hope you enjoyed watching this. Oh, I will also link some tutorial videos because um, obviously this wasn't a tutorial. It was just kind of showing you my process. But there are tutorials on how to disassemble and reassemble your saxophone. There were three in particular that I found really helpful. So I'll link those in the description so you can see those as well. And yeah, let me know if you take apart your saxophone and how that goes. Um, but thanks for watching and we'll see you in part two. Bye.